Okay, uh, we are looking at uh, probabilistic method. We are looking at reliability right now. And uh, we have looked at, uh, um, oh, actually, we still have a couple of minutes. Uh, we get uh, started. Oh, but I guess since we're all here, we might as well get started. Um, so I was mentioning about uh, some of the reliability measures. So we looked at RT, availability. We looked at things like statement TTF. We looked at mission time. And then we were looking at a couple of uh, individual cases. So I was mentioning about the constant failure rate assumption. And uh, which is what we will assume. Although later on I will relax, I will show you that you can relax that assumption. And we were looking at a couple of cases. One of them is a single unit with uh, permanent failure. So we examined this case. We have we had uh, the failure rate. Failure rate is constant. So this is a good, and this is a bad unit. And we uh, found that probability of being in state zero is the same thing as the reliability. That is the same thing as the reliability. And we found it that e is to minus lambda t, where lambda is the failure rate. And we saw that in this case, we calculated MTTF and we plugged it in in the expression integral 0 to infinity RT dt. And that gave us 1 by lambda. And then we were looking at uh, temporary faults. So this is the good state, and that's the bad state. And there we saw that uh, you can get an expression for uh, P0T, which we had uh, on the board line. And then we saw that when T approaches infinity, then P0T approaches and this basically is the steady state availability. Uh, now incidentally, do you remember we had uh, another expression for uh, Availability, do you remember this uh, expression? And which one was? Uh, let's see, did I have it somewhere here or did I have it before? Oh, I, I think I have, it, I have it here. I had another expression which says that uh, study state availability, remember this, is equal to mean time to failure divided by mean time to failure plus mean time to repair, remember this. So do you think that the two equations are the same? What do you think? Do they look the same? Remember that uh, mean time to failure is given by 1 by lambda and mean time to failure is given by 1 by lambda and mean time to repair is given by 1 by mu and if you solve it that you are going to get the if you simplify it like this So that was about uh, temporary uh, faults, and I was mentioning that for uh, temporary faults, 
uh, reliability, which is a strict measure. It is the probability that there are no failures between uh, 0 to t. And that is uh, still <coughs> given by e raised to minus lambda t. And the reason is that if you consider that diagram, so we have the good state. And we want to consider the probability that you have never left this, uh, and here is the bad state. So probability that you have never left a good state, and in that case we don't even need to consider the probability of being in this state. All you need to do is to calculate the probability of leaving the good state, and that of course probability of not leaving it is e raised to minus lambda t. So basically, same as permanent failures here. So this is same as for permanent failures. Now, even though you from here you come back here, but uh, once you have uh, gone out, it's not the same thing. Because as far as we are concerned. So you will go back to the good state and come back here, because we we were uh, this assumes that uh, this is the probability that you have never left the good state. So as far as we are concerned, this is not even a consideration. And hence MTTF, if you have to calculate it, that is still given by one by lambda, and same measure time. Okay, remember that uh, we are looking at uh, things with a probabilistic uh, perspective. And uh, there are uh, many researchers in different fields who uh, are comfortable only with a deterministic point of view. So they say, for example, look at the reliability of software. So some people will say, well, if software has a bug, it's, not un it's unreliable. The only way software can be reliable if it has no bugs. Uh, but of course, uh, as you know, if you have any reasonable software, which is uh, except for some, if it is a trivially small case, you can never assure that it's going to be bug free. Uh, in a lot of situations, a probabilistic perspective, so if you uh, do research uh, that involves probabilities, then uh, you have to take a probabilistic perspective, and sometimes that requires you to think, uh, take a different view of things. Now, do you think it would be nice if uh, things were deterministic in the world? So people, everyone, when they want to uh, go to work, so everyone uh, got out of their home at, uh, let us say, 7.30, so they can go to their office at 8 o'clock. Or do you think it would be good if Everyone decided to take their money out of the bank at the same time, or if you are uh, trading in the stock market, if everybody decides that they want to sell. So a lot of things in the of the society they work because things are probabilistic. So in fact, things being deterministic can be really bad in many cases. So there's nothing wrong with things being probabilistic. And of course, there are many things, for example, uh, you pay car insurance, and the way it works is that it's probabilistic. Uh, your health insurance is based on uh, probabilistic analysis. And uh, uh, they design the highways that is probabilistic. They're hoping that not everyone will start driving at the same time. So uh, probabilistic perspective is completely valid. And in fact, that is what you have to consider in many cases. Okay, so let's go to the next topic, which is uh, combinatorial reliability. And there, we are going to see that uh, some of this analysis uh, can be applied. As 
I was mentioning, some of the methods here are classical. You will find them in classical reliability theory. So we will talk, use the term reliability. So basically, things here are applicable for uh, reliability. We will use the term reliability, but actually, most of the things would apply if we are considering availability or uh, transaction reliability. Now, people thought about, uh, OK, so you have a difference. So basically, the problem is this. You have a system which is composed of subsystems. And uh, you know about uh, the subsystems. Uh, you know about the uh, probability that a subsystem might be bad. Then what can you say about the reliability of the complete system? So now the subsystem can be a system can be composed of subsystems or units with uh, different configurations. One of the extreme case is series configuration. The so-called series configuration. And basically, um, in this case, all the units are essential. So if one of them is bad, the system does not work. There's no redundancy. Now, a major assumption here is that the failures are statistically independent. In the analysis that we are going to see, you can analyze this even when they are not statistically independent, but makes it uh, much easier. And it, it, so basically, uh, in uh, the classical reliability theory, a series configuration is represented in this way. Now, notice that this is not exactly how the systems might be constructed. This is the conceptual representation for the view of uh, calculating uh, reliability. So this is what is uh, sometimes called uh, a reliability block diagram. So it will work correctly if all the units are working correctly. So let us calculate the reliability of the system in terms of the reliabilities of the units. OK, so reliability of the system is given by the probability that u1 is good and u2 is good and u3 is good. Let me abbreviate good. So everyone agrees with this? It follows from a bit the basic uh, uh, property of the series configuration that that is the case when all the units are essential. OK, so now assuming that uh, failures are statistically independent, then that is given by probability that u1 is good multiplied by the probability that u2 is good multiplied by the probability that u3 uh, is good. And let's assume that probability that u1 is good is given by R1, so that is equal to R1, R2, R3. And in general, if you have, let us say, n components in series, then the system reliability is given by I equal to 1 to n, this product, R sub i. 
and this is the upper